these, thank these you, chairs are a bit bouncy. Bouncy. It's good, isn't it? A good start. How are you today? today I'm good. Mary? I'm right. good, thank you. So you're in your new home now, over in London Fields. Has mm -hmm. anyone been there yet? Yeah, a few of you. Still some more to make it down. How's it going? It's going really well, man. Yeah? Really well. Really busy. And um, it's hectic. 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 Right, I'm getting on with it. The one thing I would say about you is that you've always got, like, rather than me, I'd be like, right, I've got this going on and this going on. You're like, I've got this going on, 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 this going on. How do you try and manage, I guess, like, your creativity? Because it's mad. Just people around me allowing me to be creative, basically. And, you know, I've got a good team looking after me and the business also. So it gives me room to just be creative because... That's where I'm most happy at, you know what I mean? That's your strong point. Mm. Okay, we're going to start at the beginning, um, because as I mentioned in your, in your intro, uh, you're a classically trained chef. Um, you went to college, you worked in the industry as a chef for years and mm. years and years, and here we find you, a man owning a massive vegan business. So how did that change come about, and how did you get into chefing in the first place? Oh, that started in... Um, it's always been there, you know, growing up. I'm from a Southeast Asian background, and um, food was just a big part of our culture. And I realised at an early age that I had a, a talent for flavours and smells. <clears throat> so um, I didn't do that well at school, you know what I mean? I wasn't really happy. So I was pushed to go to catering college and uh, my parents supported that. And um, that was in 1999. And um, so that was catering college and then straight to work. And it's been almost 20 years and here I am today. And you worked in like some pretty big restaurants, working with me, working with fish, working with animal products, as classically trained, trained chefs do. So how did the vegan change come about? In 2009, um, got married, we got pregnant, and I was just preparing for fatherhood and parenthood, you know? And I was just on a search, man, on a quest, do you know what I mean, to, to be a better person. I think working with me, um, for such a long time and in, in that tough industry just made me an angry chef. An angry chef with a short temper. Mm -hmm. So I just needed a change, you know? So we, we went back to the London Buddhist Centre, which is in Bethnal Green, started meditating, started looking more into Buddhism. And that's when I just realised that I needed to do a big shift, do you know what I mean? And that was vegetarianism. So in 2009, I gave up meat. And that was a big shock for, for everyone that knew me. Mm. My whole family, especially my parents, because I would always cook for them, you know. Um, it was a rocky one, man, not going to lie. And in 2014 is when I became a vegan and adopted that whole lifestyle, do you know what I mean? Um, five years vegetarian. It took me five years because I didn't have that much knowledge about the vegan lifestyle, do you know what I mean? Mm. But now it's just out there, so it's all good, man. You mentioned briefly your family. I know they've been a big part of things. Your child, like your childhood, your t teenage years, yeah. your early adult years, you are working with them and it was like a lot of hard work, right? Definitely. And um, it was just a big part of um, my culture and my existence with my family. I was the cook, do you know what I mean? Big family gatherings, I would like to cook for the elders, which is quite rare, mm -hmm. being, you know, be, being a younger. So when I went vegetarian, like, um, everyone was just missed the good stuff, do you know what I mean? The crispy yeah. belly pork, the roasted pork the um, grab like salmon, smoked salmon, all that stuff that I would just learn from these top restaurants, bring it home and cook for my mum and dad, do you know what I mean? Um, but that just all stopped. I'm telling you, 360 is mad. And how did, how did they take that decision? Because I think it's like when people go vegan, it tends to be something that they're a little bit worried about is kind of coming out, if you like, to their family and their friends, especially... Coming especially, out. Yeah, but no, but especially if you're from... That's how it feels sometimes, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like if you're from a background, like I grew up on a farm and stuff, and it's like you, you're kind of like, oh, what are they going to say? How are they going to treat me? Are they going to accept it? Are they going to make a big deal of it? It's always going to be a joke. So how was it? It was hard, it was hard. Um, I remember my father saying to me and my wife, don't mind you being vegetarian, but, you know, not, um, not London. And I was like, rah. London's your son. Yeah, London's my son. Um... That was hard because they didn't really support me 100%, do you know what I mean? So it, 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 it did feel like us against the world, man, and we just kind of like caved in and just like kept in our own lane. Um, I remember going to London VegFest in 2014 and it was just us, do you know 
you know what I mean? And if I was to go now, I'd just roll with a big crew. So things have changed. My father and my, my mother are like proper proud now, proud of their grandchildren being vegan. They're always talking about it like every time they go out and there's other adults there, other elders. Yeah, yeah, they have a vegan lifestyle. No, they can't eat that, they're vegan. So they're proud now. But it just took time. And um, I'm glad that it's, I'm glad it, it's like, it is the way it is now. Okay, cool. I know your mum was at Cook Daily for her yeah. birthday, wasn't she? Yeah, she was, yeah. So she enjoyed it. She wasn't she, missing it. Yeah, she that. loves it. She loves it. Yeah. She was happy. But what, when was it that they took on that acceptance? Because I know when you first opened Cook Daily, you had When I brought idea. them gifts, man. Oh. <laughs> Real, you know what I mean? I'll tell That's you what. Nah, I'll tell you a story. Um, when I first opened Cook Daily in 2015, I had, um, had no money. So I asked my mum to borrow some money to open Cook Daily. And um, she was like, okay, thinking that we was going to do it on a cheap budget which I normally do anyway. But I really wanted stainless steel walls. If anybody remembers the first Cook Daily in Unit 53, it was stainless steel for the whole um, container. And that cost like five grand. And I told my mum, I was like, yeah, um, I'm gonna need this much money. She's like, okay, five grand, okay. She's fucking like, what, that's the whole thing? That's the whole setup? I was like, nah, these are just for the walls. And she was just like, she didn't understand. But now she understands that it's not just about the food, it's about, it's about what you're putting in you know, it's about your, your whole vision, do you know what I mean? And she understands now, so, yeah, she lends me more money now. Yeah, that's all right. Or you lend her, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's going to yeah. start to happen. She's um, actually gone to Laos today. Oh, has she? Yeah. For her birthday I was meant holiday. to be taking her to the airport, but I'm here. Aww, thanks, so, we yeah, really I, I, appreciate I paid for you. her to go um, Laos for two months for her birthday. Aww. So she's loving it. So cute. Um, so you just talked about your stainless steel walls, and I guess mm -hmm. something that we know about you is that the branding and style of Cook Daily is something that's always been very clear. So where did that come from, that vision, and how did you make sure that you implemented it? I was just say it's from like, my style, very bold, you know. Um, I wanted Cook Daily to look like an open kitchen, not just kitchen and in front of house. So front of house and back of house was emerging one, and that was the whole idea of the stainless steel walls, stainless steel furniture, and just really chrome and black, quite you know, industrial, you know. Um, and graffiti played a big part of that also, so handwritten menus. But you know what? This all comes down to not having a lot of money in the beginning anyway mm -hmm. to, you know, to put money into like, a proper menu and stuff, you know, because menus can cost quite a lot. So it was just, everything was handwritten. I went to Ikea, got these rolly matte things and just like, got the juiced up my ink marker and just written the menu. Um, chairs. I bought cardboard chairs for storage also. So it's just about making it work, you know, making it work a shipping container, you know, which is so small, and not a lot of money, and just having a vision to feed the public, but you had to make it work, and that's what we knew how to do, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you could have, you, someone with your experience, you could have gone down the route of like a vegan fine dining, you could have done something like that, so where did your concept I changed, man. In, in 2014, I found myself as a vegan chef. Mm -hmm. I didn't really um, get inspiration from the old school fellas anymore, you know, people that I used to look up to. Gordon and Ramsay, Mark Pure White, all these other top chefs, you know. Um, there's nothing in common anymore. Uh, London, London City was changing, and in 2014, you know, I, I really kind of like embraced it with just the urban culture. Mm -hmm. You know, we're having our own music scene, our own food culture, so it, I kind of like just saw it and thought, you know what, it's time to be us, you know what I mean, rather than being this person that's trying to fit in this industry or looking for inspiration from a different city, different country, LA, New York. I just thought, you know what? We're gonna do it here in London. And people are gonna look to London and think, yeah, it's happening here. So right now that's happening and I'm just, I'm just so gassed over it, man. Um, Cook Daily was my first experience actually of vegan food. Cause I used to do uh, Spartan Fan with Shackle Bars. Yeah. And then after we finished the boot camp, we would come to Cook Daily yeah. and eat vegan food. And I wasn't I remember actually, that. I wasn't vegan at the time. You wasn't. And that was when you'd first like, First day, you'd only been open for a few months, hadn't you? I think at that point. I don't think a few months. Just, Must have been a few right weeks. Just right at the start. Actually, do you know what? It was a few. It might have been like a week or two because um, Spartan Fam really supported me mm -hmm. when I first opened. The whole crew came to eat because obviously I used to train with Shaka yeah. and the crew. Yeah. And when I opened Cook Daily, I just got loads of support from them. So that must have been about a week or two. And I think what what happened for me going there as part of that group, but also as part of the, I guess, like you and the people that were there already, mm. like Jamie, um, was that, like, in my mind, I'd always thought that the vegan was, like, a middle-aged white man with dreadlocks, mm. wearing hemp trousers. Mm. Like, that's just what I'd thought, like, growing up. On that's what I thought. That, yeah. Also. See, see? That's what I was so. like, I didn't, I didn't want to be a vegan. I just wanted yeah. to be vegetarian for, like, five years. <laughs> 
truth's coming out now. Yeah, truth's coming out now. Um, but being around all of you guys, I was like, hold on a second. Like, and also, I thought, I, this is mad, but um, when I was growing up, there was a lady who used to look after us, and her daughter was vegan, and she used to eat stuff that she grew like on her window ledge. So she was eating like weird Cheers. fungi and stuff. And I was just like, what? I had no idea. I had no concept. But I think just being there completely changed everything and opened me up to this whole new world. Um, so let's talk about the menu. Yeah. How did you come up with the concept for the menu and the dishes that you chose? Just knowing. Knowing about Shoreditch, knowing about London, knowing the flavours of London, knowing what the people want. Um, you know, I've served Londoners for so long and I just knew what they wanted. So you have to understand that like, us Brits, we can handle spice. The majority of us because, you know, <laughs> compared to, um, compared to like, France or Spain or something. So I kind of knew this and kind of like worked my way through the menu, knowing what people would like. Mm -hmm. So I have 15 dishes. Well, I started off with 10 and that's never changed. And then I opened home, which was um, vegan Thai. Mm -hmm. And I put it all in one. So now we have 15 dishes and they've never really changed because they do so well because I think the flavors speak to people. So, I mean, what, what do you have normally? Uh, I normally have noodle bowl or the garden. Exactly, it works. Yeah. So I just guess about knowing, knowing, knowing what people want. I know it sounds, it sounds weird, but a lot of people don't know what people want, man. Yeah, it's true. I get you. Um, what's your favourite dish? Um, I get asked this a lot, but I don't have a favourite. It depends on, the, on my mood and the weather. So right now I've been um, proper banging um, cocoa soup bowl, which is a noodle soup bowl. Yeah, I had that last time. Yeah. So. Trying to lose a bit of weight. Uh, it's cold. I put a scotch bonnet in. And I feel like blowing my nose after, so I would go for that. <laughs> but on a, um, on a summer's day, I'd probably go for something lighter, like a La Garden. So it changes. I think my relationship with food always changes. But some of the dishes are infamous. Isn't that your mum's recipe? That's my mum's um, Thai green curry recipe, yeah. yeah. So you stole that. Is she OK about that? No, I didn't steal it. I just, uh, I just pimped it up. Just, yeah. just borrowed it's it. Like, think of it as a collab, Mama okay. Times. You know so you mean? made it better. You took yeah. hers and then yeah, you yeah. made it better as well. Now, do you know what yeah. I did with that? Basically, um, I thought of a green smoothie. And a normal Thai curry, you would get the curry paste, cook it in oil, and then add the coconut milk and bring it to boil, etc., right, and season. I wanted to have no oil in this curry, so I would blend coconut milk with spinach, mm -hmm. like a green smoothie, like mm -hmm. banana and spinach, and then I would cook the green curry in that green coconut milk, so that's why the green curry is nice and vibrant and green. Because when you go to Thailand, it's not really green, it's quite pale. Mm -hmm. But I just thought green curry needed to be green, so I just pimped it up with a uh, green smoothie idea. With the spinach, coconut milk. Spinach and coconut milk. you just drunk it? Is that it's a nice combination? You could do. Not for you? No, not for me. Not for me. Um, so, when basically, from the moment that you opened Cook Daily, you were just busy. Busy, that yeah. It was just, normally it, happen, so it was just me and my wife. How did you create um, that? Oh man, it was so tough because we had something to prove to, our, to my parents. <laughs> no, seriously, I um, had something to prove to them and it was like, I wanted to prove to them that a vegan business and a vegan idea would work. Because when I told them, there was like, what, not even eggs, not chicken or nothing like that. And I was like, nah, like straight vegan, not vegetarian, you know. Um, and I just had something to prove. So we promised each other, me and my wife, 100 days straight of um, just like straight working. Wow. Um, it was just two of us in the kitchen, one, uh, one KP, kitchen porter, help, help washing up, and someone at the front, and we was there for 100 days. So during that time, I was just proper on wheatgrass, uh, smoothies with loads of maca powder. Couldn't afford to get Co ill. Yeah, coconut water, just couldn't afford to get ill because there was no one else to cook. I didn't train no one yet, do you know what I mean? So that was a crazy time, man. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm so glad that we promised ourselves that because it kind of set, set the pace, you know? You two are a real team, huh? Definitely, yeah. Couldn't do it without her. I couldn't, no. She's magical. Um, so let's talk about, I think, one of the things that people know when they think about Cook Daily is that you've always got, like, some kind of famous people, like, hovering around, and that you, you had this kind of, like, support of people posting and tweeting and Instagramming. How did you create that? Did it just happen, or was that... How did it's organic, man. Organic growth. Um, I never reached out to no one. Do you know that when I opened? I swear, it was just, we, we just opened and we really wanted to feed the, the locals, the office people, um, just the people around Shoreditch, do you know what I mean? And obviously like friends and family and stuff, mm -hmm. but um, people just came through and then they did all the, the hype thing for me, man. And within a week we was established, but um, you know, I was friends with a few, a few people before that. And um, 
I remember when Temper T came, that was, that was quite legendary. He just came, got his phone out and started Snapchatting or Instagramming, whatever, and it was like hype. It was like proper hype, hype. I was like, okay, okay. And then the next day I had like, must have been about 30, 30, 30 youths in tracksuits <laughs> queuing up to eat cool daily. And I was like, powers. So it was sick. It was so sick, just man. And, um, like that yeah, somewhere. and then um, just, you know, and then half of the industry just came through and I feel like they could connect with me knowing who I am and where I'm from. And they have trust in that, do you know what I mean? They could, yeah, they could connect. And in the early days, I would connect with people. I would be in and out of the kitchen, mm. talking and just dropping a bit of knowledge here and there of what I've learned so far, do you know what I mean? And um, it was fun times. 2015 was really fun, man. I enjoyed it. Cool. Um, what makes you so passionate about London, I guess, and East London especially? I guess, um, you know, I moved abroad um, in my early 20s. We lived in Spain for a total of four years. I was cooking out there in a hotel, um, did a bit of traveling, went to Asia. Thailand, learned some culinary skills there. And that time I hated London, you know? Mm. I just wanted to get away. I thought that that would find me happiness, going away. And then right now I realized that it doesn't really matter where you are, man. It's like, it's all in here. So I just realized that London's, Lond I'm a born and bred Londoner and I'm just gonna embrace it properly now. So right now I'm just concentrating on London and especially East London. So even though I had a, shop in um, Croydon, it, and that was doing really well. I closed that down because I just didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy the business side of things. You know what I mean? It was, it was almost, it was just business. It wasn't, yeah. there it, it was no more passion in it, so I stopped that. I terminated my contract to go to Wembley, and now I'm in East London, and I've said to a few people that if I do decide to open a few more places, believe it or not, it will be in East London. Yeah. I just realized now, I know like there's a demand, but it's like, I think we have to be happy as a mm -hmm. team and as a family unit of what we want to do, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's important for us to be happy. I think one thing I know from spending time with you and that's kind of inspired me is that you listen so much to your intuition. So even if someone's like dangling some money in front of you or, you know, potentially this could be good business, mm. if it doesn't feel right to you and it doesn't equal happiness for you, you're so happy to say no to it. Whereas I think like a lot of other people, including myself, like society tells us that we should be thankful or we should be grateful and we should just kind of take those opportunities. But you, you have that confidence where you just sit back and you look at it and you're like, is it good for me? No, I'm not going to do it. Yes, I'm going to do it. Where do you get that level of like confidence in your self, I guess? It's been around for a while. <laughs> been around for a while and just seeing all the all the bull, all the all the all the rubbish man. Um, we have power, you know. Individuals, we have power. So I'm just I I like to say I think the you know, the people have a lot of power, so it's, that's how simple it is. That's how simple it is. But there's so much stuff out there that's steering us away from really concentrating what you really want to do, do you know what I mean? And I've just learned from other people's mistakes. I came out in 2015, you know, like a lot of my friends have been in this industry, not, not the food industry, but just, for example, the music industry for like 15 years deep. And I've seen their mistakes. And, you know, we talk a lot, so I know that I can do this fully independently, 100%. But it's just, it's just if I want to carry on and being fully independent, do you know what I mean? But 100% you can do it, man. And just got to build a community and get the people behind you and just be genuine. And that's all it is. There's, there's not much to it. Okay, who inspires you? Wow. Or what inspires you? London, the city of London inspires me. Uh, the people of London, graffiti writers, skaters, bikers, just the people in London, you know, um, that are doing, that are being themselves and just being free. A lot of... Um, a lot of musicians inspire me, a lot of tattoo artists inspire me, graffiti artists, and just, a, and just a, the vegan community also. My close vegan community, you know? People like Bright Zion, Temple of Satan, all these guys that I've seen grow, Vida Bakery. I'm thinking, do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's happening now, do you know what I mean? Like Mushi's, it's happening. Like East London is now the vegan mile, the mecca of vegan London. Mm -hmm. And in 2015, it wasn't even like that. So seeing all these new places pop up, it's sick, man. I love it. 
um, because I can eat there. <laughs> <laughs> no, as a chef, you need to eat somewhere else also, man. So I just wish that there was a late night place. So after we finish that cook daily, we could roll up and have a few drinks and a few bites. But I don't know, maybe someone can do that. Someone's out there yeah. that's thinking yeah. about that. Perhaps that would be the next thing. Um, What's next for you? So you've just opened the place in London Fields. What have you got on the horizon? Anything that you can share? Is it all under wraps? No, I'll just say, um, I just want to concentrate on Cook Daily at London Fields at the moment. You know, and that's the honest, and that's, that's been being honest. Obviously, I've got a few things popping up here and there, but I really want to build, um, I want to build Hackney. I think Shoreditch was crazy. I built that up. It's booming now. Um, I don't want to come back to Hackney. I used to live around the corner from there anyway. So, yeah, I'm really concentrating on a new space and just building a vibe. A Reggae vibe. Sundays. Reggae Sundays, all of that stuff, man. It'll be sick. Um, yeah, so many things are going to be happening in the new space because we have more space to express ourselves. Cool. So I'm really looking forward to hosting a few events and parties there, man. Okay, now you did a little post on your Instagram before this to ask if anyone had anything that they wanted us to talk about. Um, and so let's have a little look at them. How do you get kids to be more adventurous with spices and flavours? Lie to them. Okay. <laughs> so what we do, um, <laughs> first of all, a bit of black pepper. Add in a bit of black, like make something really tasty. Let's say a mac and cheese. Oh, most kids love that, right? Add black pepper. And if they can see the black bits, add white pepper. So they can't see it and it's like, it's going to be tasty, but it'll be a bit heat and that's how you introduce them to spices. And after pepper becomes turmeric, cinnamon, ginger. So it's about sneaking it in. Okay. Yeah, sneaking like it in. And, um, I like Yeah, sneaking it in and making it fun. But you've got to make it tasty for them. Because I realise that a lot of kids don't like bland food also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they get bored very quick. And do you think, like with your kids, are they all the same? Do they all eat the same things? Are they yeah. all happy to? Yeah, so... Um, yeah, they do. They do. I think that's an um, important thing also is to kind of um, let them eat at the same table as their parents. A lot of parents, what they do is feed the kids first and then they would eat and then the kids are crying like halfway through your meal. So start at the same time on a dinner table and just introduce different things and maybe bribe them on if you eat the, all that spinach, you'll get this. Do you know what I mean? So bribery and love. Yeah, man. I mean, it works. It works for me. It works for me. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, they love, they love spinach now because they can connect with it with, I don't know, a new game or something. You know what I mean? Top tips there. <laughs> top tips. Um, okay, so top five ways to transition to veganism. Top five ways. Um, watch documentaries. Yeah. Earthlings. That, that's what got me. Okay. Earthlings in 2009. One. Gary Rossi's great speech. Two. Two. Um, no, um, research. I'm sorry, say again. What was it? <laughs> Top five ways to transition to veganism. Exploring. Talking Ex to people. Yeah, exploring just uh, just what's what's out there. Try new things, cooking, and just just I don't know, man. I can't really put five. Just go for it, man. <laughs> just go for it. You, you know that it's positive. Just go for it. Okay, cool. And finally, then the last question, because we've got to wrap it up. How do you create a successful vegan business? Just some, some tips that you, that you can give to people if they're thinking about it. I'll say practice. Practice your product of what you've got before you come out. If you're trying to, I think a good way to test the waters is um, food stores, food markets. Yeah. Um, yeah, just practice on the product. Practice the speed, the pace, you know, all angles of it. Doesn't mean it's just got to taste great. But you might be a slow server, do you know what I mean? Have a queue down the road for about half an hour, nothing's moving. So it's about practicing everything from how clear your menu is, how fast you can execute it, uh, the flavor combinations. Is it gonna speak to everyone or just a small group? Do you know what I mean? So all these things you've got to think about and just practice before you come out. I'm sure all of these people in here do already follow you on social media, but if they don't, what's your thing? King Cook Daily. At King Cook Daily. Thank you, King. It's been Thank amazing you. to have a chat with you.